し。どうしたっけ。Epistle to read from Paul, which the word epistle is like a letter.、Um, and this gives you、uh, a, deeper, a deeper understanding, you could say, of, of Paul's personality and、mm-hmm. what kind of man he was,、mm-hmm. all right, and what he portrayed. And matter of fact, can you get、uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 1?、Okay. All right, because reading this, you can kind of see how Paul conducted himself, and especially how he conducted himself to the a u t h o r Which、mm-hmm. the, where I can be brothers. Okay. All right. You can go ahead and bring it. This is 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Hamashiach. Now, verse 2. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them, them to you. Right. So Paul is just pretty much saying, hey, man, follow me like I'm following you, Hamashiach. And one good way to Uh, follow the Apostle Paul to read the book of Philemon and see his, his demeanor and how he conducted himself and things of that nature. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get some、uh, quick facts about the book of Philemon. We're going to speak about、uh, the individuals in this book. And we're going to get a good overview. I call it an overview so you often can go in a deeper study to,、mm-hmm. uh, to the book. We're just laying out a foundation. So, without further ado, we're going to start with Philemon 101. This is Philemon 1 and 1. Paul, a prisoner of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia, Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house.、Right. So,、uh, this is Paul wrote this epistle while he was in,、uh, in Rome in prison. Okay?、Uh, that's one of the And when he mentions、uh, a prisoner, get, get Ephesians,、um, let me say 1 and 16.、Okay. Or 3 and 1. Yeah, one is, get Ephesians 3 and 1. 3 and 1. Yeah, get Ephesians 3 and 1. The prisoner? Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, and actually,、uh, I'm going to get this. In,、uh, in the book of Ephesians, the、uh, Apostle Paul refers to and utilizes that term prisoner often, too. You know, which that's a,、uh, one thing to highlight as far as, you know, the Apostle Paul and the renowned men of the scriptures of old, man, how about s h a n e l s h a t took them through cr- crooked ways, man? They went through a lot of situations in which, you know, the Heavenly Father actually tried these men's faith, man. You know, actually, like, it's one thing to, and even the、uh, Apostle g a b a r speaks upon this about when, when we read the scriptures to really envision ourselves within the scriptures. You see, and we read these accounts of these you know, things of these men throughout the scriptures, and it's like, man, when, when the Apostle Paul wrote of being a prisoner, he was literally a prisoner. <laughs> right, right, right. And then also, you know, and relating that you know, to you know, being a prisoner for Yahweh Bashan and Al-Shah, because when you're a servant and you're a minister, you, you are completely owned,、uh, you know, for the most part, by your master, the same way that we are completely owned by our masters, Yahweh Bashan and Al-Shah. Right, right. Then、uh, Paul, he mentions, like the brother was saying, prisoner. He mentions the prisoner of hope、mm-hmm. a lot of times. But、um, in Philippians, you're pretty much Ephesians. Only think three, three, three times it shows up in the script where he says he's a prisoner of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach.、Mm-hmm. Okay?、Uh, which is kind of like ironic that he was. Paul was very good with, with words.、Mm-hmm. Okay? And.、Um, As you can tell, it's funny because you read,、uh, what's that, 1 Corinthians 2, where it says, Not in the excellency of speech, and、mm-hmm. there's big words、mm-hmm. after that. You know what I'm saying? Humble. <laughs> but、uh, he was a very learned, learned individual.、Mm-hmm. But he was a prisoner of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. It was just, the reason I say that is because while he was writing this epistle, the reason why he was in、uh, prison. Was for believing in Yahweh Shah.、Mm-hmm. All right. So that's 
really, you know, another, you know, bringing another thing to light why he says this thing, but also, you know, in the spirit of everything and um, for edification purposes, we, man, we are a prisoner of the hour, Shah Mashiach. Mm -hmm. When we get to the kingdom, we'll be servants, uh, be in servitude to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just going from one captivity to the next, it's just, I'd rather be in the next one, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. All right, so you can get Ephesians 3 or 1. God, I'll make a quick point before I read that, because um, even, because, uh, you know, this being an overview, and we kind of, you know, we're going to go through the book, uh, but like the, the officer said, as far as it being a great opportunity for Aki or the listeners to delve deeper into this book for yourself, and, you know, and, and get certain understandings through, you know, the spirit of studying and being diligent, it also just made a quick point on that second verse when it speaks when uh, the Apostle Paul reads writes of uh, into the church in thy house because that's like like the brother said you know the Apostle Paul and other you know Christians of the time meaning they were following the anointed our, our Lord and our Messiah Yahweh Shai this was a big way a major way in which they disseminated their their faith and their truth you know is by gathering in each other's actual home and it's the same thing we do to this day right? you know that's how. And that's a, a sign that you know we're on the right path because we're doing things that allow the scriptures that, like I said, the, the renowned men of old did, man. That's right. Uh, so you said Ephesians 3, right? Yeah, Ephesians 3. Man. It's, okay. Okay. it's Ephesians 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. For this call I call the prisoner of Yahweh Mashiach for you Gentiles. If ye have heard of this of the dispensation of the grace of the Most High, which is given me to you, how that by Revelation, he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Hamashiach. Right, so I just wanted to get that quick one because it's just another instance where he mentioned the prisoner of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. All right, you can go back to Phil Philemon uh, 1 and 1. Okay. This is uh, Philemon 1 and 1. Paul, a prisoner of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, and Timothy, our brother, Unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. Right, so that goes to show you uh, the relationship between uh, Paul and Philemon, all right? Because Philemon was a uh, individual who was in the collage camp, you could say. All right, you got it, brother. Uh, continuing on, verse 2. And to our beloved Aphia and Archippus. Arch right, so uh, scholars do say uh, when you look into Aphia, uh, that was a that was a woman, all right. Uh, possibly, you know, doesn't mention specifically, but possibly the wife of Philemon. Mm -hmm. uh, and the archivist, they they sometimes say that is a uh, like Philemon's son, okay. But also, they are some historians say that it was just a a member in the uh, pretty much like how we say the camp of mm -hmm. Colossians. Mm -hmm. um, Give Colossians 4 and 17, because yeah. it will mention these certain individuals in there. Uh, that's another thing when you read the book of Philemon, since it's so related to Colossians, because uh, Philemon, he pretty much was, he, he was in Co uh, Co Co Colossians, or how do you say the city? Co uh, Colossia? Colossia. The wild brother. I'm um, mistaken. So you can go ahead and get yeah, uh, Colossians 4, 4 and 17. Con. Uh, Colossians 4 and 17. And say to Archippus, take, Go ahead, it's a lot of okay. take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it. Right, so that's, he could just have been a brother in that specific camp or at the actual son of Philemon. Okay, all right, you got to go back to Philemon 1 and 2. Okay. Because it said our fellow soldier. Mm -hmm. All right, so, hey. We we're fighting a spir spiritual battle. We we can we can say we're men of war. Mm -hmm. We're just in a spiritual war at the moment. Mm -hmm. All right. So they Archippus was a, he was just a fellow member. Mm -hmm. You know, you got it, brother. <clears throat> Philemon one and two, and to our beloved Athia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Right. Go ahead. Grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Yahusha Mashiach. Right. Man, see, Paul, he was a he was a very caring individual in almost all of his epistles. You can read the book of Romans. You can read uh, 1 and 2 Corinthians, uh, Galatians, Ephesians. Um, 
those type of books, he always said in those books, uh, grace to, uh, to you and peace from our Father, the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. That's pretty much saying what? Hey, Yahweh Shai Yahweh Shai Mashiach Yahweh Shai Mashiach Yahweh Shai Mashiach Yahweh Shai Mashiach All right? That's what he, he greets. Okay? He greets all his, um, his fellow brethren. Mm -hmm. Simple and plain as that. You know? You got it, bro. Kind of. Philemon 1 and 4. I thank my power, my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Right. And it says, making mention of thee always in my prayers. That's this this is something that you should take from Paul. You pray for your you should be praying for your brothers every single day. Mm -hmm. Whether you're saying the name individually or you're just putting it in as a whole, just asking the Lord to send uh, blessings, Barakam. Uh, you could just say uh, Shalak Barakam Kayah Haki. Mm -hmm. You know, just send blessings for the uh, for the for the brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, something simple as that. Send send safeties. Uh, to the brothers, the talking, you know, and healings to the brothers. You should be praying for the, uh, your brothers every single day. Mm -hmm. And it should make mention of them in your prayers, whether it be individual, like, you know, we mentioned, or in a whole, all right, to cover the whole uh, uh, compass of things mm -hmm. and pray for the elect mm -hmm. and your apostles, yep. you know. Okay. Uh, get Ephesians 1 and 16. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold a, let's see. There's, there's certain places where you said that. You got it, baby. Ephesians okay. 1, 16. Okay, this is Ephesians 1, verse 16. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Yeah, so, yeah that's it. That's it. Well, I, I got it right here, too. Another one. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 2. It says, we give thanks to the Most High always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Paul was always praying, okay? Also, when we look up uh, some things about Paul, uh, some historians say that he established over 20 churches, all right? We just get a, a pistols and a few of them, all right? He established. When you read the book of Acts and see what the missions that he went on, you know, uh, he went to Ephesus, and, you know, he had contact with these individuals, you know? Corinth, uh, Corinth, Greece, and all these things, okay? Um, the Romans, the, who else? Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. Those were some good epistles. But he established these churches and he always had them in their prayers. And then also, just to make a small point too, when you think of a church, like I said, you know, a lot of these churches, the, the glue was in these households, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And what's very powerful about that they connected to this now is the, the, the power of the internet, man. You know what I mean? In which the moments that other people that, you know, the, the viewer or the audience may not see, you know what I'm saying? We see and experience because of our connection to this church, to this, you know, there's certain things that, you know, only certain sets can see, like even with 144,000, you know, that's why, you know, we believe the spirit, you know, there's going to be, because it makes sense, there's going to be orders and level in the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? So there's certain things that, you know, if you're a particular lot or, or in the hierarchy of the government and structure of the nation of Israel, you're going to only be exposed to certain things. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things that, you know, we share, that we speak on our own personal experiences, our own personal walk, because this is a very personal uh, uh, letter, it's a book, mm -hmm. you see? So a lot of things that we express, you know, you all as listed, you may not be able to actually physically experience. You just got to take our word for it. You know, the same way that, you know, like, like the uh, brothers bringing out, you know, key points about the Apostle Paul, you know, the, the, the makeup and the, the manner and the man and the character that he was, that, that he uh, possessed, you see what I'm saying? Uh, we're speaking to that as well, you know, to the best of our ability because of how we feel, you know, how Yahweh Shah is working in our own personal lives, man. Right, right. Matter of fact, get the word church because I think that goes into Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. Which means like a an assembly, all right. You want etymology? Or you can get the you can get it in the, in the Greek. Okay. Right? Or get that word church. Okay.
Strong's G, 1577, Ecclesia. Yeah. Ecclesia. You see, that goes into the word Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. Keep on going, brother. Kind of, and uh, like I said, Strong's G, 1577, Ecclesia. It says, uh, a gathering of citizens called out from their homes into some public place in the assembly. It's an assembly. Mm -hmm. The assembly of the Israelites, mm -hmm. um, in a Christian sense, in which you know, through the Spirit, we are true Christians because we follow the true anointing. We follow Yahweh Shai. Right. You know, uh, uh, it says an assembly of Christians gathered for worship in a religious meeting. Right. When you see us all on the highways and byways, that's an Ecclesiastes. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the church. You know, uh, Yahweh Shai was saying where two or three are gathered. That I am in the midst, just mm -hmm. paraphrasing, that he's in the midst of the church. All right? You can, that's why uh, when you read the book of Revelation, on the second chapter, it speaks about, when I say the seven churches, you know, you got Smyrna, Philadelphia, and things of that nature. Uh, those churches, just to mention, you know, some, a couple of them, those were assemblies and gatherings where there were men of, uh, of belief there. You know, like, like I said, I would say Philemon, part of the camp of Colossians. You know, just like <clears throat> you would see us today in Camp of Atlanta. All right, you got the Camp of New York, Camp of LA. Those are churches. You see, where uh, there's a symbol of men of like mind and uh, men of this similar and same belief. And Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai are gathered together. Mm -hmm. You know, you keep going to Philemon, okay. uh, verse 5. Okay. This is Philemon 1 and 5. Hearing of thy love and faith. Mm -hmm. Which thou hast towards the Lord Yahweh Shai and towards all saints. Right. So that goes to show you that there was a good report, all right, uh, with Philemon. Okay. Also, it says, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast towards the Lord and toward all saints. That goes, he's speaking to Philemon personally. It shows you the relationship that Paul and Philemon had, man. All right. He believes this man, Philemon, is a man of the Lord. That's how you should be walking, uh, walking around, uh, believing in your autumn. All right, well, I believe this man is is a just individual. Just matter of fact, get uh, what's that? In John, the first chapter with uh, Nathaniel, man. Okay. All right, I think it's like sixty something. Uh, John one, sixty or fifty something. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Forty-five. Forty-five. Yeah. Okay. Start at forty. Yeah, start at forty-five. 44, uh, 45 kind. Of. Oh, this is uh, John 1 and 45. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Right. He's like, Man, we found him, man. He is here. And he went to go tell the word to Nathanael. Go ahead. Kind of. Verse 46. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Which every time I read that, it makes me chuckle. Man. Right. It's like, man, Nazareth was the hood, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, real talk. When you when you look into uh, the historical, um, pretty much background of Nazareth, you can. We're here in Atlanta. You can compare it to, you know, what what what's a city here? Or I know I know what the Dallas brothers know, like down south, South Oak Cliff, Duncanville area. Things like that, but what's the city here in uh, Oh, just the trenches? Yeah. Oh, there's certain parts of the west side, man. Oh, they say, uh, Zone 6. Zone 6. Uh, man. Grady, Grady. <laughs> you, know? you know what I'm saying? Over there. It, and that's how cities are. That's the nature of cities. Little five points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be, it be a little spots, man, you know? Because even, you know, and to be honest, we don't even know all the spots like that because we don't even be out there in the streets like that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not from Atlanta. Right. So I mean, it's like, yeah, you know really, what I mean? But you know certain areas you don't go. Right. But the thing about it is, see, we don't even be in the streets like that because, you know, we follow the spirit, but we can't. It's not wise. But Atlanta, real talk, is a uh, uh, matching per capita murder numbers of Chicago, man. Chicago, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when we think about us being literally in the valley of the shadow of death or the belly of this beast, man. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things that Yahweh Shah doesn't want us to see and be exposed to because of 
how, you know, left it could be, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, uh, through spirit, we believe that the Heavenly Father is also preparing us for the times that come that, you know, are like never before seen upon earth, which is a heavy thing, you know, just, you know, balancing mercy and grace that uh, we have access to be allotted to, you know what I'm saying, from the Heavenly Father, the Yahweh Right, right. So pretty much, the day was like, man, this, what good comes out of this, this city, man? But then it's, yeah. like you said, it makes you chuckle, but then the next interaction is like, it bring it all home, you know? You, know? you got it, bro. Kind of, and finishing out uh, in John 1 and 46, Philip saith unto him, come and see. <clears throat> I'll show you what good came out of that. It's like no, it's a trick, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, this sound like our people, uh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, <laughs> John 1 and 47. Yahweh Shai saw Nathaniel coming to him and saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no God. So even with that, Yahweh Shai was really jabbing back. Like, yeah, yeah you and Jake for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you, even you proposing that question, you know what I'm saying, just show like the mind of Jake, man, like, damn, like, you just said, what good, what good comes out of Nazareth? You know what I'm saying? And how I was like, yep, behold, look, that's an Israelite indeed, but said what? In whom is no God. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which means he didn't mean no offense by it. You know what I'm saying? But it's just a funny interaction, you know, not only of our people of Israel, of Israel and Israelites, you see what I'm saying, but also, you know, of our Lord, man. Right. You know, and even one thing that Apostle Paul, when he would write to the churches and write certain letters, and he would, you know, speak upon praying for, you know, those people praying for that church, you also come in what name? Yahweh Shai, you know, and that's very important because he's, he's, he's doing that to magnify our Lord Yahweh Shai because we have accounts like this, well this, this may seem like a small thing, there's only a few verses, but every verse, every word, everything, you know, in our uh, holy scriptures is valuable. Right. You see? Uh, and also just to, you know, just go back to the beginning of this book. Mm -hmm. This was written during the time where Paul was in prison, around the uh, time of 60 to 63 AD. Just to, just to bring a little small fact out there. Okay. Just so you can get the time frame of when this was all being said and written. You can go back to Philemon, <coughs> uh, chapter 1 and 6. Okay. But pretty much verse 5 is showing a, a snippet of the relationship that he had with this church and the specific man, Philemon. Matter of fact, get Philemon's name and see what it means. Oh, yeah, kind of, yeah. Since we're doing an overview of Philemon. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was going to uh, bring it out later, but it's, it's not good. Okay. It makes sense to do it now, too. So this is um let's see. Last slide. Um I'll find it because I, I I didn't I didn't have it queued up, but I I know that I'm gonna come across it and I'll bring it out. Okay, are you bring it in the uh, blue letter real quick? Oh in the blue letter, okay. Alright. Yeah, in the Greek. Okay. So I was just put that in the city, so just say, so uh, there you go. Strong G, 5371. Philemon. Philemon. Soft. Sounds like Philemon. But yeah, Philemon in, in the Greek, what does it, what does it mean? Uh, it, said, it says one who kisses. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can say one who kisses. Uh, when you go into and read the Psalms and some of, I want to say, 1st, 2nd Samuel. Some of, some of the kings that talk about how King David, um, I think also, uh, matter of fact, Paul writes about it. Uh, let's see, uh, with that, pretty much with the, 
if you can type in a blue letter, of like type in the word kiss. Kiss. All right, because Paul even says it as well. All right, one kisses, one kisses is showing a sign of like, you know, um, I want to say compassion, but like, well, you can say that, but also gentle and, and caringness towards one. All right. Um, just find, just type in the word kiss and see what uh, scripts pop up. Okay. Real quick, uh, script, particularly in the uh, New Testament. Okay. All right. Because I know with the holy kiss. That's what Paul said, is with the holy kiss. Okay. When you find him, go into his one of his epistles. With the holy kiss. Mm-hmm. I know he mentions it a few times. Uh Romans, First Corinthians, right. Second Corinthians. Get get that first Thessalonians five and twenty six. Okay. Right. It's like a greeting. Mm-hmm. Now you don't have to get a definition of it, just I want you to read that. Just right. Read the verse. Read that verse. Okay. Because the name of Philippon means uh what with the kiss? Mm-hmm. Right. So you got it, brother. Uh I started with one verse. Uh first Thessalonians five and twenty five. Brethren, pray for us. Mm-hmm. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. Right. Which greeting someone with a holy kiss is pretty much what we do on you know, whenever we see each other. We uh give a you give a salute, link arms, probably embrace. That's symbolic of a holy kiss, which is uh, it's very uh, comfortable, you could say. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, sending a blessing onto one another. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, the relationship between Paul and Philemon was so, you know, pivotal, you could say. Mm-hmm. No other reason why he has an epistle in the Bible. Mm-hmm. All right, for us to read. Okay. You can go back to um, the book of Philemon now, because that's that's just pretty much when to get a light of what his name his name meant. You know. You might as well keep First Thessalonians open too, man, because there's some precepts out of there that can go with this book, and keep the book of Colossians open. Because when you, matter of fact, when you looked up the name uh, Philemon, if you, you don't mind going back to it, okay. uh, it said he was a resident of Col- uh, Colossians or Colossia. You know, uh, when you read the definition of it, so you read the definition real quick. It says a resident of Colossus. 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 There you go. Mm-hmm. It says, what else? Converted to Christianity by Paul mm-hmm. and the recipient of the letter bearing his name. Right. So he was uh, a con- you know, pretty much uh, told the truth from Paul. And he started believing in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. That's why he could greet him in verse 3, saying that, um, grace unto you. Uh, in peace from our father, the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Mm-hmm. So you go ahead and go back to Philemon man, and okay. start at verse 6. Alright, so this is uh, Philemon 1 and 6. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you through. Right, the communication is the sharing, pretty much means the sharing, so that, that sharing of, of thy faith, that's why he said what was said in verse 5, says may become effectual, effectual meaning come to come into effect, or become effective, uh, by the acknowledging of every good thing, which is in Yahweh uh, Mashiach. so you can get First Thessalonians 5 and 18. Paul was really, he was really talking, he was talking to Philemon, mm-hmm. you know, very brotherly, very kindly, all right? Of course, also, Paul is going to come come this in this manner towards Philemon because he's presenting him with something, all right? Because at the same time, well, we'll get to it, man. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. This is 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of the Most High in Amashaki Hausha concerning you. Right, and that's what he meant towards the end of that. Every good thing which is in you, in Yahweh Mashiach. You can go back to Philemon. Okay. Uh, Philemon 1 and 7. Mm-hmm. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love. I right, see that. And you, we have great joy. What is it? What does he say in Philippians? Fulfill ye my joy. Uh, I'm going to say Philippians, the second chapter. All right, he says, uh, we have, for we have great joy and consolation. Consolation goes into comfort. We have comfort knowing 
that you still have the faith. You're in the faith and believe. All right, go ahead. Because the vows of the saints are refreshed by the brother. Ooh, ooh, see, that's heavy. Okay. He says, I have joy and comfort that you're still in the faith and you believe in Yahweh Hashem Yahshai because you are bringing the comfort and joy in the bowels, which when you go into the word bowels, it means the minds of the saints, which are the elect. Doing this work is a is a beautiful thing, man, because you're you're sending out this comfort um, to uh, one another, pretty much. Uh, matter of fact, can you give it a second that Second Corinthians um, one and five? You know, because it talked about the consolation, which is the comfort. And it says uh, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed. Was that um, what's the word for refresh? Kindness. Kindness. All right. Which means, you know, renewed. Okay? You got it. Well, just start at, no, it's a lot of you. Yeah, start at the end. Second Corinthians 1 and 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Most High, even the Father of our Lord, yeah. Moshe Mashiach, the Father of mercies and the power of all comfort, right. Go ahead. who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. See, Philemon comfort, comforted uh, Paul by him having uh, still having faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Why would he say that? Because he was in prison. <laughs> he needed some type of comfort. And knowing that this man was still in the faith, that brought joy and comfort to the heart of Paul, man. You see? Go ahead, brother. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of the Most High. Right. So it says, who comforted us in all of our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them. That goes a sign of selflessness. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Uh, selflessness, meaning, man, this feels good. I want to go relinquish this over to uh, ones who believe as well. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, just, you know, tell people about the Holy Shot. You see? All right, you can, you can go back to Philippians 1. You can add on whatever you want, bro. Okay, God. Let me reread that verse. Mm -hmm. Philemon 1 and 7. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, mm -hmm. because the vows of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in my mm -hmm. to enjoy thee, that mm -hmm. which is convenient. Right. It said, Where, wherefore, though I might be much bold, and you know, Shai Mashiach to enjoin. When you go into that word enjoin, it means to charge. It's a command. So this is showing another side of Paul, his sternness. Like, he said, like, wherefore, that I might, though. He's like, hey, you know, I, I could or whatnot be like, yo, <laughs> you know, so they, this is the deal. And you just do it. But he said, he's using, he's taking the brotherly love route. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, which I'm not saying um, giving a commandment isn't brotherly love. Because you may have to just tell a brother straight up, hey, bro, you have to do this. All right? And that's showing brotherly love because you may be pulling him out the fire. Matt, get Jude. Get the book of Jude. Now that I mentioned that, get the book of Jude 23, uh, verse 23. Because you're pulling an individual, start at 22. Uh, because you're pulling an individual out of the fire. All right. Uh, that's why it's a, it's pivotal to uh, it's pivotal to accept rebuke and reproof. Okay, and also to give it if you're in that position. If a brother had a booger in his nose in public, you just ain't gonna say shit to him and make him look stupid. No man, say something. Mm -hmm. All right, you can go ahead with uh, Jude. God, okay. uh, I'm gonna start at verse 21. Uh, Jude, verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of Most High, looking for the mercy of our Lord, Yahusha Mashiach, unto eternal life. Right, and how do you keep yourself in the love of the Most High? By keeping his commandments, like it speaks about in uh, 2 John. And this is love, that you keep the commandments. This is what, paraphrasing, this was what written uh, from the, the beginning. All right, Ecclesiastes, what's that, 12 and 13? All right. And the whole do your man is to fear the most high and keep his commandments. That's how you keep on pretty much just telling you how to keep on the good side of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Keep yourself in the love of the most high. Do what he asks. Go ahead, brother. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. And of some have compassion making a difference. Some have compassion making a difference. This is what Paul is doing. He is having compassion. He's making a difference in Philemon's life. 
And we're going to read and show how it is. Go ahead. And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And that's, that is, that is the point right there, man. All right. Where he says, uh, wherefore, though I might be much bold in now, Shah Mashiach, to enjoin, to charge you. All right. That be, uh, be that which is convenient. Right. All right. I'm pulling you out the fire in this man that I am relinquishing over to you. All right. You can go back and fill it. Out. Yeah. I think uh, now just to set a little context, too, for, you know, to kind of, I think, possibly bring more understanding to why the Apostle Paul is beginning this letter this way and in this fashion is because uh, there is a man who's getting ready to be uh, spoken of, right. Onesimus, who was once belonged to uh, Philemon. Right. And, um, you know, as a slave, you know, and he ended up running away, but encountered the Apostle Paul, who converted him to a Christian, I mean, a follower of the anointed Yahweh Shai, and he's now he is also at the same time charged Onesimus to go back to his former master or his master, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's very light and delicate because you know if you look into uh, the commentaries or you know just uh, 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 delve into the relationship between slaves and someone who was owned of a household and their master in um, this time frame, they had pretty much complete autonomy to deal with their slaves, their property, however they wanted to. You know, they could kill them, put them to death, get them crucified. They could, you know, there were certain times that fugitives would run away, they would get branded, or, you know, there was, so in the, in, in the same fashion that the Apostle Paul is showing a level of sternness, he's also showing a level of compassion because he has to, you know, right. work both sides, you know, it, you know, because in the carnal law, the carnal sense, Philemon would be not out of his, you know, legislative line to punish this man harshly. But because the Apostle Paul has accepted this uh, man, Onesimus, uh, uh, to unto himself, you know, and also believes in him to be redeemed through his belief and faith in Yahweh Shai, he wants to hand him back over delicately as well. Right, he's gonna get into it in verse nine, but mm -hmm. pretty much the whole uh, point of the matter is Paul is using the brotherly persuasion mm -hmm. at the moment, all right? You gotta remember, you're dealing with another, another man's household. Mm -hmm. However the man lives is how he lives. I want to say the scriptures say um, pretty much metal not in another man's affairs. Onesimus is one of uh, Philemon's affairs. Okay? So it is a del very delicate situation, and that's why he's dealing with them as such through verses 1 through 9, mm -hmm. or 1 through 8. Mm -hmm. All right? Dealing with them with uh, a, level, a level of wisdom, really. Mm -hmm. You know? All right, you got it, bro. Philemon 1 and 9. Yet for love's sake, I'd rather beseech thee, right. being such. And one as Paul the age is now also a prisoner of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Right. When you go into a beseech thee, a beseech is, a, is an appeal. Like, right. hey, yo, I, I behoove, or, you know, uh, and he's appealing and he's speaking because you got to know also in a physical sense, he, on this, Onesimus, came back to Philemon with this letter. Mm -hmm. He just showed back up. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure Philemon was like, man, what the hell? Mm -hmm. And he just gave him that letter and he started reading it. You see? He probably, Paul probably knew, and I'm just speaking as a man, Paul probably knew it when Onesimus came back. Because also, I think, I think this letter was sent by a man also for some reason, I want to say like Tychus or something. Let me see something real quick. Salaki. All right. Um, let's go back to the book of Colossians. Right. 
I'm gonna read Colossians chapter four and seven real quick. It says, "All my state shall Ty Tychicus declare unto you." So Tychicus was a messenger, pretty much. So Tychicus delivered letters or epistles that um, Paul wrote. All right. That's why it's important to read these epistles. Each epistle is it's, it's kind of like the Gospels. Mm -hmm. You read Mark, you get a better understanding of Matthew. You read Matthew, you get a better understanding of John. John, you get a better understanding of Luke. You read Philemon, you got to read Colossians because Philemon was associated with the book of Colossians. Okay? And more than, and let me see here. And uh, in the, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the book of Colossians, that was written around 60, 61 AD as well. Just like the book of Philemon was written between the years of 60 and 63 AD. This was written during the same time. So who's to say he didn't send this uh, book of Colossians? And if I'm not mistaken, 60 AD time frame, Paul was in prison in Rome. So he could have sent the, the book of Col the, the epistle or the letter of Colossians along with the letter to Philemon specifically with the messengers via uh, Tychus, you see? All right, so you got to like, Philemon may have saw an estimate like, bro, what a, what a lack of better terms, what a fuck you been, bro. Mm -hmm. Probably pissed. And then reading this letter could have calmed him down in the spirit. You see? You go back to verse 9, brother. Because he's appealing, he's appealing to Philemon. All right, you got it, bro. Uh, you said go back to verse? Bro, go back to verse 9. Okay, can I? Mm -hmm. Philemon 1 and 9. Yet for love's sake, rather I beseech thee, mm -hmm. being such and one as Paul the age, is now also a prisoner of Yahweh Shabbashiach. Yeah? That's the second time he mentions that. And also he said, yet for love's sake, the scriptures talk about to pretty much deal gently with one another. All right? Go ahead. Because he said in verse 8, I might be much bold. All right? To enjoin, meaning charge you to accept this man back. But that's not the route I'm taking. I'm appealing to you. All right? Like I said, brotherly persuasion. All right? You got it, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, Philemon 1 and 10. Mm -hmm. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Right, my son Onesimus. And it's the reason why he calls him my son. Mm -hmm. Okay? Go to uh, Colossians. You gotta stay in the book of Colossians with this, man. Uh, I'm gonna say like Colossians 4 and like 8 or something like that. Because I think Onesimus is uh, mentioned in that as well. Maybe verse 9. Okay. Oh, Onesimus? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll start verse 7. Colossians 4 and 7. All my state shall Typhus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord, whom I have sent unto you. For the same purpose that he might know your state and comfort your hearts. Right, because he said that he's getting, he's uh, delivering a letter. Mm -hmm. Okay, he says, Whom I have sent unto you. All right, so Tychus was the one carrying these epistles for Paul. Okay, you got it, bro. With Onesimus. Ooh, see, see, that is a this. I'm telling you, bro, that you got to read Colossians with Philemon. And that's how you know Philemon was associated with Colossians, and, and when you read about him, he was a uh, resident of uh, 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 Colos, Colos. Colos. I saw Colos, Colos, say, Col but, yeah, Colos. Colos. All right, he was a resident of that specific city, mm -hmm. okay, or that environment, okay? Mm -hmm. So he says, whom, it says, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose mm -hmm. that he might, he sent unto you for the same purpose that he might know your state and comfort your hearts and has a semicolon. Okay, meaning there's a no more explanation coming. And it says, uh, not a semicolon, but a... That's a, that's a, a semicolon. It is? Okay. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, with Onesimus, or Onesimus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? So Tychus was sent with a letter with Onesimus. Okay? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Colossians 4 9. With Onesimus... Mm -hmm. A faithful and beloved brother who is one of you. Right. So he's. This is the same thing. This is why it's very humbling to read these epistles. Remember when you were standing on the outside. Mm -hmm. Brothers didn't know who you for a king. 
from a can of paint. Mm -hmm. And then when once that an elder brother in that camp deemed it necessary through the spirit to allow you to come in, guess what? They spoke on your behalf to the other Akim saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. This is a faithful, beloved brother, accept him. That's very humbling. All right, because the spirit could didn't have to allow you. You can see it now. The, the order that was being pushed out, no new members. You see? All right? But the brothers in the camp, man, you got to really realize what Paul is saying to Philemon. Okay? And how to accept this man back into his household. But not just as a servant. As a brother. He is speaking on the behalf of Onesimus. Okay? Let me finish it off, bro. Nine. Uh, continuing in Colossians 4 9, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. Right. They shall make known unto you all things which are done here because Onesimus, or Onesimus, how you, know, how you pronounce it, um, he encountered Paul, and like the, the officer beautifully said, he pretty much told him about the truth, and Onesimus believed. All right. But he was a helper of Paul. During his during his stay with Paul, mm -hmm. so therefore he was like, "Yo, they're gonna tell you what was done here while he was with me." Mm -hmm. All right, just to give an account. Mm -hmm. All right, and just you know, think about it too. Like, you put yourself in those shoes. The man matches the, the the you know the description, so to speak, on on the paper. You know what I'm saying? Like, you think about you know the Apostle Paul sending men to give word, you know, certain things in a certain accounts and, and church updates. You know, with letters, you know, with uh, writings. So when these men get to their destinations, it has to, everything has to align up. Like, like you said, like Philemon, probably this man, like, yo, what the, you know, what's going on, bro? You know what I'm saying? And we don't know the intricacies of, because even you know, going to some uh, scholarly scholarly debate, they say that it might have been possible that Onesimus might have stole something. Right. You know, I mean, we don't know the ins and outs of the entirety of the situation. We just know he departed from Philemon right. without consent, mm -hmm. you can say, from Philemon. Mm -hmm. He was a surgeon. You see? He was a surgeon. He was supposed to stay and be in servitude to Philemon. Also, uh, this goes to show you the type of financial level that Philemon was on. Mm -hmm. To own the slave. Mm -hmm. You gotta take care of him. Feed him, have a roof over his head, clothe him. You gotta have some type of financial stability to do so. To show the fi financial stability that, that Philemon had. And it's gonna get more into it in the, in the book of Philemon. You gotta go. I'm gonna uh, uh, read it 10. Philemon 1 and 10. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, mm -hmm. whom I have begotten in my bonds, mm -hmm. which in time past was to thee unprofitable. <laughs> but now profitable to thee and to me. Right. So pretty much Paul, again, is using a play on words. He's, he, he's a learned man because the word, uh, the name Onesimus means uh, profitable. All right. He's like, at first he was unprofitable, but now he's profitable. I promise you he is. You see? Now he's using a play on words. He's just telling, he's, he's pretty much saying in verse 11, in the time past, Onesimus was not profitable, but now Onesimus is Onesimus. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, bro. Okay. Verse 12, whom I have sent again, mm -hmm. thou therefore receive him, that is my own vows, right. whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. Right, you're like, man, I wish I would, you know, could retain him, but. He doesn't belong to me. Right. I gotta send him back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I have to. This is the right thing to do. You see? I mean, it's, it's not up to me if I, you know, I wish he could stay. It's like when a brother comes uh, and visits from another state. Mm -hmm. You know, like, man, I wish he could stay, man. You know, like, I'm gonna say, yeah, I said it. Uh, the elder from Milwaukee. Oh, man. Talent, man, you are a part of this game. Right. <laughs> you know, we love right. that. All those spirit, man. All those spirit, you know? we love that man. Yeah. That that is a great elder. Mm -hmm. You know? Every time I see him, it's like he's never left. Right. You see? Mm -hmm. But who am I to say you have to stay here? Right. 
he has his his buildings to go do it. He's ahead of the camp over in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. He has to he has to deal with that. I got a quick three seven. You got it, brother. Ecclesiastes seven and one. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. And, you know, you got it. So yeah, kind of. You know, like the scriptures say, you know, a good name is better than precious ointment, and you know, the punctuation there is a colon, so that's a you know defined statement. But even when you go into it, you know, just to you know speak upon you know certain men, you know, in our camps and our churches that. It's like, I was saying, like the uh, uh, the elder brother in Thompson one. It's like it's 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 good to be able to speak to the uh, the, the positives and and, and you know, beautiful things that Yahweh Shinawa Shai has, has graced us with. You know, at certain times you you can just see certain things on certain men, which go to a good name. You know, but even the day of death, then the day of one's birth, because even with us, you know, also we're taking these letters and these epistles. You know, and we're taking into account these accounts and relate them to ourselves as well, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, we live in America. It sucks here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. We hate this place, mm-hmm. you know, but when we're able to connect, you know, through the spirit and do certain things and, you know, try our best to add to the tabernacle of David that Yahweh Shemel Shah is allowing us to have an opportunity to build and we can connect and do all these things and add to the church and be that comforting force in the midst of hell, it feels good, you know, and we are thankful for that. And we did that by even, you know, dying to this place, man, because we know this place is not our rest. All right. Uh, read verse 14. Uh, kind of. Hey, man, it's good that you brought out that precept because he's, he's pretty much clearing what this is made mm-hmm. uh, for towards Philemon, you know what I'm saying? He's mm-hmm. presented him that he's like, bro, no, he's a he's a good man. Mm-hmm. Just take him back. Mm-hmm. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Do it, man. Uh Philip 1 and 14. Mm-hmm. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. Right. So that is him covering verse 13. Alright. He said, I would retain him with me, but verse 14, he cut he clears it up. He almost ex- you know, pretty much like exploited um he pretty much, yeah, he exploited uh, the brotherly, you know, relationship between him and me, uh, you know, Philemon right there. Mm-hmm. He utilized, he tapped into it, right. you know what I'm saying? Because then, you yeah, think about it too, Apostle Paul is saying, I don't want this man to leave me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he is like a son to me, right? you know? But because, like the brother said, you know, uh, Understanding and the wisdom that was granted to him to understand, I have to send this man back. Right. So, the least I can do in this situation, which is obviously a big, big thing, is to draft this letter to you, Brother Fulma. Right. Because I love this man, and I know that the situation, you know, could go in a particular way and manner. But just take it into consideration the fact that. I love this man that I'm sending to you. He said a son to me, and I'm just asking of you that if in me releasing this man from me through the spirit, please just do this for me. Put it on you know my tab, so to speak. Do it for me because understand this: if it was my choice, this man would not leave my side. Right. You that's, know that's why I said he exploited. If you're going to exploit it, means uh, uh, a bold feat. Mm-hmm. It was bold for him to say. I'll keep him with me, you know what I'm saying? But I, I just can't do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't it's not it's not right. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh let's see here. Uh it's Phil Mom 1 and 15. I'm gonna read this later. Okay, come on. Phil Mom 1 and 15. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou should shouldest Receive him forever. Right, uh, Salah, get get Second Corinthians nine and seven. Just get that verse right there. This is Second Corinthians nine and seven. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for the Most High loveth a cheerful giver. That's what Paul is doing. He's not being greedy. 
being being greedy would be just to keep him out of help. You know, but man, it's just not it wasn't his place. You know, you can go to verse 15 now. Nah. Philemon 1 and 15. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest shouldest receive him forever. Right. Hey, you gotta think too, man. And you just apply this to our day and age, like a I was gonna say, like a suspension. All right. A brother may have, you know, had it apart from us for a little bit and then he rejoined us. He was rejoined via the elders of the camp and presented to the rest of the camp and he's telling, hey, the rest of our brothers, you know, welcome them with open arms. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That brings us back now. You see? This book of Philemon is heavy, man. Mm -hmm. It's very humbling when you read it. Because mm -hmm. it's situations that happen in our day and age, today, what we go through, uh, that this is speaking of. You know, some brothers just may have slipped up or whatever, and they get a good report and they come back. Mm -hmm. You see? All right? Lord, Lord, Lord forbid it, it happens no more. You know what I'm saying? All right. Everybody stay down, man. You know, stay with the camera, stay with your own shot, you know. But this is a good epistle to show that. Right? This shows the mercy and the gratitude and the compassion and things of that nature of a uh, of a Paul, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you got it, bro. Well, come on, I can maybe bring out a, a quick word you mentioned just said it. Mm -hmm. Uh there's, there's a word that popped in my mind thing about this book is compassion, compassionate. So just reading the etymology from etymonline.com uh, of uh, the noun form of compassion, it says feeling of sorrow or deep tenderness for one who is suffering or experiencing misfortune. You see, and it says, it says, it says feeling of sorrow or deep tenderness, meaning like loving care, you know? And, you know, that's one thing that we had to actively, you know, keep in our minds Especially dealing in his ministry, especially considering all the things that Yahweh that Yahweh Shai has done for us. A lot of these things that the Apostle Paul is a lot of these a lot of qualities that the Apostle Paul has learned and uh, and exemplified and shown. He's learned by learning of our Lord Yahweh Shai. Oh, well, you see, get Philippians two real quick. Okay. You can keep saying what you're saying. Um, so you know when we really Think about how important Yahweh Shai is to us even thousands of years later. <laughs> you know, how much more, you know, men of these times, you know, mm -hmm. who actually experience, you know, Yahweh Shai or dealt with our Lord directly and intimately, seeing the miracles, watch, you know, traveling village to, to towns and seeing hundreds, if not thousands of people's lives changed by one man. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes, you know, even, you know, yesterday speaking to camp, speaking about certain instances and how how Bashanel Shah doesn't need a large number of individuals to do something great. And also don't count the power of one, man. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, a big reason in which why this is a very dense uh, book, even though it's short, is like the brother said, because of the stories and that, that one and two, you no know, connections of you know, Apostle Paul, Onesimus, and Philemon, a three-person connection. Mm -hmm. But everyone was so interconnected that the Spirit made it so that certain situations and things were handled in very specific ways. And it was the Spirit that did that. It wasn't a carnal thing of man. And men went through those situations, but the Spirit brought out the fullness of how to deal with certain things that a carnal world and carnal knowledge cannot give you an understanding of. Right, right. And you said fill my no, Philippians, Philippians two. two? Uh -huh. Okay, God. Because Paul did learn. That's why he said this to the Philippians, the church of Philippians. He started like four. Kind of. It's like five. Okay. You said Philippians. He was at two and four. I think it's five, but this mind being you. Two and five? I want to say it's two and five. Okay. This is uh, the book of Philippians. Philippians two? Yeah, kind of. And five. 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Hamashiach Keep going. Verse 6. Who being in the form of the Most High, thought it not robbery to be equal with the Most High, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Right. And so you said, learn from this man right here, just like I did. That's why we should the spirit had it when we started with first. Corinthians 11 and 1, all right? Because that's the man that he learned from, okay? Paul had encountered Yahweh Shai personally when you go into Acts the ninth chapter, okay? I thou kick us against the pricks, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he encountered him personally, he learned from him, from a man, he changed his life, you see? And he's, uh, and what is it, being inside, or an example unto Philemon and how to uh, conduct himself as well, man. Mm -hmm. All right, I bet Philemon learned a lot from this uh, from this epistle from Paul and how to conduct himself in here on out because Paul was Philemon is one of Paul's food, you know, and that's another reason why he called Onesimus his son. It's mm -hmm. just his fruit, you know. You got it, bro. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Philemon 1 and 16. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Right. Get Ephesians uh, 6 and 5. Then I'm going to get a quick precept real quick. Colossians. Stay in Colossians, baby. Mm -hmm. this, right. Let me get Colossians. Yeah, go ahead with that. Get that. Get that. First. Okay, kind. Of. This is Ephesians chapter six, verse five. Servants, be obey obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, mm -hmm. with fear and trembling, the singleness of your heart, as unto a Mashiach. Right. It's pretty yeah. much where I, the precept I was going to get because it says it's literally the same thing in Colossians three and twenty-two. It says the same thing, but this is that's pretty much towards. Onesimus, or Onesimus, mm -hmm. you know? But like, you gotta be obedient, man, you know? It says both in the flesh and in the Lord, mm -hmm. okay? You got it, bro. Kind. Verse 17. Kind. Philippians 1, Philemon 1 and 17. If thou count me, therefore, a partner, receive him as myself. Woo! Hey, man, if you, can, if you count me as a bro, better count him as a bro. Mm -hmm. If not, you see where your mind is at, really. And what fault did Paul have? You know what I'm saying? You got it, bro. Kind of. Verse 18. If he have wronged thee or owed thee aught, put that on my account. And that's what we were saying earlier, right? You know, some scholars say he may have stole so yeah, he yeah. ran off. Yeah. But whatever he owned, we know the main thing that happened was he ran off. Right. Just put that on me. Mm -hmm. I'll take the, the hit for it. I'll take the blame for it. Whatever I can do, I, you know, I'll fix it for you. Mm -hmm. That that get a get Sirach chapter twelve verse two. You see, is that just put that on me? And also the scriptures, um, and pretty much, uh, I want to say the scriptures say um, Paul wrote this. I forgot what book it was in. Well, pretty much said, um, you know. Why can't we reap unto you the, the carnal things? Because we give you the spiritual. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And also the scriptures say, oh, with no man. I think that's in Sirach. But pretty much why I'm, the reason why I'm quoting those scripts is because Paul said, put that on me. But you think Paul's going to repay? Damn right. Mm -hmm. the, yes. The, the spiritual spirit. things right. that, he, that he does for the Israelites in general. I mean. Right. All right. You think Paul repaid Philemon? Yes, to this very day. Mm -hmm. Because Philemon, the spirit of Philemon, is reading the book of Philemon. Mm -hmm. right. Again, mm -hmm. he's reading the book of Titus. He's reading the book of Hebrews. He's reading the book of Timothy. Um, well, he's reading Paul's epistles. Mm -hmm. He's reading the book of Acts and what and the journeys that Paul went through. Paul did repay. Mm -hmm. You know, you got it, bro. Okay. This is Ecclesiasticus of Sirach 12 and 2. 
do good to the godly man, mm -hmm. and thou shalt find a recompense, and if not from him, yet from the most high. See, he said, well, plain as that. Philemon did get a recompense. All right? At the end of the day, we don't know for sure, 100% sure, he received a miss in his back. Mm -hmm. Do the spirit, I believe he did. Right. 100%. You know what I'm saying? But that was doing good to a godly man by receiving mm -hmm. one who was uh, speaking about a niece in this, one who was spoken to in such good light, mm -hmm. you know, spoken about in such good light. Mm -hmm. That was doing good to a godly man, receiving mm -hmm. him back into the camp, back into his house. You see, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I believe Philemon received uh, uh, a reward for that, and he learned from Paul to be a brotherly individual. Mm -hmm. And I bet you, Onesimus um, um, and Philemon's relationship, and I'm speaking as a man, mm -hmm. took off. Yeah, you 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 we utilize spiritual extrapolation, mm -hmm. like that only makes sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like other other possibilities, of course, but in Reading this account and understanding the power of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai and, and the power of this moment and the power of these words, like this is a, bit, a very heavy moment, man. And a major component of the heaviness of that moment is this letter, is the actual writings. And you're thinking about considering all these things and you know the, the nature of these men. And also, once again, like but said, we speak as men, but like I said, through spiritual extrapolation, it makes sense that their relationship was another level because what's the common denominator? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And not only Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, but Yahweh Shai, man. You know? Because all these things and, you know, sending a man back to his, his household, which is really obeying the common law, you know, the law of the land, you know, which is also spiritual. Obeying the law of the land, in which no matter which land we as Israelites are, uh, are spread to, we as Israelites believe that we need to uphold these laws to the best of our ability as much as we can. But if you know, use utilizing wisdom in certain situations, you have to just do what is legally right, in which the Apostle Paul did that. But also understanding the whole scope of everything that's going on, yeah, it makes perfect sense that these men. Not only once they reconnected, because even in uh, uh, that's that's a part of our culture and heritage is having slaves and having servants of your own nation. That's why the scriptures even going back, even going to the Old Testament, speaks upon certain you know ways to deal with matters and you know possessions and, and all that. So even though this was in a, 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 a we weren't in our, our promised land, promised estates, so to speak, you know it's still common law, you know, but. The Apostle Paul is vouching for this man as a new creation, you know, a new form of creation through the power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Right. Okay. okay, Con, this is um, Philemon 1 and 19. I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. Albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. Yeah, brother. Let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my vows in the Lord. Same thing he said in Philippians. Go ahead. And then if I can say too, uh, see, that's the Apostle Paul saying, yo, I promise to, if you accept this man back, I promise to repay you. You know what I'm saying? And we, through understanding of the scriptures, understand that even if there isn't hypothetically a physical uh, repayment, because the Apostle Paul is locked down, man. There we do believe in a spiritual Conversation why the brother brought it, had, uh, had me bring out Sirach 12 and 2. You see what I'm saying? Um, but also, uh, the Apostle Paul is, just, is, is speaking upon more or less the same thing. Uh, let me read that verse. Philemon 1 and 19. I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. I, albeit, I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thy own self besides. Yeah, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. And that's the point I want to make off of that in verse 12. Is the Apostle Paul saying, you know what? 
you feel my as a brother in the truth and a brother in belief of Yahweh Shai. You can charge me up in the spirit by accepting this man. You can refresh my bowels as well. You see what I'm saying? Like, yes, I'm asking you to have compassion upon Onesimus and for everything to happen, but bro, you can give me a shot of spirit. I'm telling you, I'm writing it out to you that you can give me a shot of spirit through the spirit and refresh my bowels and my Lord if you choose to do so. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, let me continue. Let's go ahead, bro. Uh, Philemon 1 and 21. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou would also do more than I say. See? I'm going to get a precept. Yeah, like I said real quick, let's get that precept. That's heavy. The Apostle Paul said, hey, Philemon, I got so much faith in you that even though I'm humbly, hum humbly, but, you know, forcefully <laughs> requesting this of you, and I know that's a major thing for me to ask. And for me to even ask that, that's a bold thing to ask. Man, I believe in you that you're going to do even more than I can even expect for this brother. That I'm excited about that. This is Colossians chapter 2 to 5. Pretty much what Paul is reiterating back in Colossians. <laughs> Colossians 2 to 5. For, thou, uh, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet, uh, yet am I with you in the spirit. Joining and beholding your order, see, the steadfastness of your faith in Hamashiach. So it says, uh, having confidence in thy in thy obedience, which is an order. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt mm -hmm. also do more than I say. Mm -hmm. So that's he's like, even that's what he said in Colossians two and five. You know, I ain't physically there. I know you'll keep your order. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Your spirit. I know you will. It's the same thing. Uh, the uh, apostles and elders of today, they up in Connecticut, New York, very, and they have orders that, that went out. They ain't physically here. But through the spirit, we're still doing what they ask. So yeah. if they did come, it would just be exactly what they did, what they told us. Right. It's the same thing Paul is saying to Philemon. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's, it's kind of, that's why I say you're going to see the compassion of brotherly, but also the sternness and serious, the seriousness yeah, absolutely. of Paul. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah, you know, I'm coming to you, but. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, like, let's like say, for example, if the Apostle Paul wasn't, you know, physically locked up and he went to Philemon with Onesimus, it's like, do you think Philemon would be so mad at Onesimus that he wouldn't be happy to see the Apostle Paul? Right. You think he'd be like, well, oh man, Paul's here, in which it's obvious that they have a very intimate relationship, mm -hmm. you know, and a strong rapport. You, you know, you think, and it's like, what's the chances of that? Because even going up earlier, uh, the Apostle Paul said that, if I, if I can get a second, um, going back to uh, in the middle of the chapter, Philemon 1 and 9. Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such and one as Paul the age, and now also a prisoner of Yahusha Mashiach, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. What's the chances of this, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is a perfect, this is a, this is, this is a softball. This is you know, a spiritual softball. It's a perfect opportunity for you to not look at this situation in a carnal manner, right. for you to exemplify compassion. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I could charge you. Like, if, if I was there, I was like, brother, you got, I know the brother ran away, but you have to this man back, man, come on. Just in the spirit of sense, you'd be so happy that we're all together right. that you wouldn't even be worried about that BS. And you would look, you would really look at this man as a new man in, in Yahweh Shah. But the Apostle Paul can't physically do that, but he can do what? Write this letter. Right. So when the man returns to you and he has his letter, it's like, bro, what's the chances that I even came across this man in my travels, learned about Yahweh Shai, you believe in Yahweh Shai, we all connect, he believes in Yahweh Shai, and now he's going back to you. And it's not like Onesimus uh, was there by himself, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. Titus was right there with him. Exactly. And it said it in the book of Colossians to tell them what was done here. Mm -hmm. So it's not only this letter 
back in back in the the name of Onesimus up, mm-hmm. but also Tychicus as well. And Onesimus telling you mm-hmm. it's going to be kind of hard to reject this um, appeal uh, from Paul. You see? Yeah, that's true. And, and to land back on that point, yo, know, this man is can help you reconnect with a, a man that you may not see again. You know what I'm saying? Like, this may be your last, Onesimus may be your last direct connection to your beloved brother, Paul. And it's at the same time, but what did Paul do for you, Philemon? Exactly. He gave you the truth as well. Mm-hmm. And he accepted you as a brother as well. Mm-hmm. Why can't you do the same? Mm-hmm. That's simple. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. You got it, bro. Let's finish it off. Absolutely. This is Philemon 1 and 21. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, mm-hmm. knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. Right. But with all, prepare me also, Elijah. Mm-hmm. For I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. That's the second, the uh, the second kind of script showing you the financial situation that Philemon's in. Hey, prepare me, Elijah. <laughs> yeah. Probably had a nice size house, or mm-hmm. probably had another loft or somewhere, somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know. You got it, bro. Okay. Verse 23. Mm-hmm. There salute thee, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner of Mashaki Hausha, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. Mm-hmm. The grace of our Lord, Yahusha Mashiach, be with be with your spirit, our minds will be true. Right. So that's that's Paul greeting the this is another indication and proof that Philemon was a part of the Colossians because all those names that he mentions from verse 23 to 25 and minus one name of them go, go ahead and grab for uh, Colossians 4 and 10 okay. alright but minus one name I want to say mm-hmm. uh, all those were mentioned in the camp or the church of uh, the Colossians mm-hmm. alright so he's like oh yeah and tell them brothers and said what's up mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying <laughs> Shout on. Mm-hmm. Paul was always shouting out. You know, he should be. Uh, yeah, Timothy was always shouting out too. At the end of Timothy, a, you know, salute Priscilla and Aquila, mm-hmm. things of that nature. But you got it, brother. Okay. Colossians 4 and 10. Arist- Aristar- Aristarchus, mm-hmm. my fellow prisoner, saluted you and Marcus, mm-hmm. sister's son to Barnabas. Touching whom ye receive commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. Mm-hmm. And Yahweh Shai, which is called Justice, who are of the circumcision, mm-hmm. or yeah, and Jesus, there are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of the Most High, which have been a comfort unto me. Mm-hmm. Apophras, who is one of you, a servant of Mashiach, mm-hmm. saluted you always laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of the Most High. Verse 14. Come. Colossians 4 and 13. For I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you and them that are in uh, Laodicea and them in Heracles, mm-hmm. Luke the beloved physician and Demas greet you. Right, right. So... I mean, let me see. I think the one that wasn't mentioned in Philemon uh, was uh, Justice. Mm-hmm. That was the only one that wasn't fit, uh, mentioned versus 23 to 25 in uh, Philemon. Because mm-hmm. it only said Epaphras, uh, uh, Marcus, Aristarchus, Aristarchus mm-hmm. uh, Demas, and Lucas. All right, which is Uncle Luke, you know, uh, my fellow laborers. But it didn't mention justice, but he was just saying shalom to those to those oxen. Mm-hmm. But you know, pretty much just the whole rundown of the book of Philemon or the epistle of Philemon. Matter of fact, brother, can you get through on the fifteen and twelve? Sure. And we're gonna close it off with this script. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter fifteen, verse twelve. And if thy brother, a he and Hebrew man or an Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. Mm-hmm. So pretty much, this was a law on a Hebrew servant. 
Uh, keep reading to verse 15. Okay. And the 15, I'm going to bring up a point. Okay. Deuteronomy 15 and 13. And when thou sendest him out free from me, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Right. So this is the law that Philemon was to keep. Okay. Uh, but what? Onesimus ran away. All right. Which in turn, you wouldn't be able to keep this law. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yes, this epistle had to come back with Onesimus with Tychus. All right. To pretty much speak on behalf of him. Um, also, what's that? Give Mark. I want to say it's Mark. Mark 10. Let me see. All right. Because this is a specific thing that Halashai had said that I want to bring out. Let me see. Is it Mark 10? Yeah, give Mark 10 and start at, start at 1, and you can read swiftly. Okay. Mark 10 and 1. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan, and the people resort unto him again. Mm -hmm. and, and as was, and he was wont, he taught them again. Mm -hmm. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? <laughs> and they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. That's all I want right there. Mm -hmm. For the hardness of his heart, he wrote mm -hmm. you this precept. So it's the same thing right here. If you want it, for the hardness of Israel's heart, he wrote, Moses wrote this precept mm -hmm. you. Okay? For you to keep. Now, of course, I was just applying that to this. Right, yeah. yeah that's, that's a whole different topic. Yeah, yeah. The divorcement, but for the hardness. But I mean, I, because I mean, if this wasn't written, Israel would do what they did, I want to say, in the, in the Chronicles. When you read the book of Chronicles, when um, pretty much the southern and northern tribe went at it. Mm -hmm. And I think the southern tribe took the northern tribe into slavery as bond men and bond women. Also, you know, went up in their stuff and killed each other, mm -hmm. brother. Went to war with war. Like, this is why it was written. Because, mm -hmm. you know, stubborn ass Jake is going to do shit like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you can keep going in verse 13. Okay, come on. And, uh, uh, so I'll do the Roman. Oh, okay. Uh, 15 and 13. Okay. This is Deuteronomy uh, 15 and 13. And when thou sendest him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. <laughs> Paul kind of kept that. He said on this in this map back with Tychus in a letter. Mm -hmm. He did not go away empty. Nope. All right, go ahead. Verse 14. Thou shalt furnish him liber liberally mm -hmm. out of thy flock and out of thy floor and mm -hmm. out of thy winepress of that wherewith the Lord Yahweh shall thy power have blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him. Right. Now read verse 15. This is a point. Deuteronomy 15 and 15. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the Lord Yahweh shall shy thy power, power redeem thee. Mm -hmm. Therefore I command thee this thing today. See, verse 15 applies to Philemon. Mm -hmm. Hey, at once you didn't know this truth either. You didn't have the spirit, you didn't really know about Yahweh Shai that much. At one at one point, did you not? And then the Lord redeemed you. Redeem this man, Onesimus. You see? Because mm -hmm. at one point, you're in the same position as this man. Mm -hmm. All right? Through the Spirit. Yeah. You know, you may not have been a servant or anything, but through the Spirit, you're in the same position as this man. Mm -hmm. Receive. Take this man, man, mm -hmm. and allow him in the, in the Colossian camp. Yeah. You see? You know? So, uh, did you have any closing statements or words, baby? Wow. So, Lord Woman, that was edifying. That was just a, an overview of the book of Philemon, and y'all brothers can go back and, you know, reread it and go through a diligent study of it. We just wanted to lay out a foundation for you. Uh, so, Lord Woman, again, that was edifying. We're going to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem, and Kakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who will teach well. Peace, love, salutations to the elect 144 Front Street. I'm the brother Kashi Kuala. I'm the brother Yudai. Until the next time, we'll say Shalom. Shalom.